Well, good morning. We are coming at you live from Clovis, New Mexico. And here in Clovis, we woke up with quite a surprise. We knew that a cold front was coming in, but we didn't even expect to have a little bit of snow on the ground. So uh, yes, we have a fire going here. I cannot believe that uh, we have a fire going, but it's feeling nice and warm and cozy. So thank you for joining us once again every day and Monday through Friday. I'm going to do a 10 for 10, take a 10 minute uh, time for devotional at 10 o'clock. So thank you for joining us. So I want to share uh, just a word of encouragement to you today. So if you can, get out your sword, get out your weapon, get out your Bible. And we're going to go to a few scriptures together today and then we're going to close in prayer. Now, I was listening to a, <clears throat> an interview with Heidi Baker. If you're not familiar with Heidi Baker, she is a part of Iris uh, Ministries there in Mozambique, Africa. And I love her ministry. I love her heart. And she ministers to the poorest of the poor. Well, she was sharing a word during this coronavirus, and she mentioned Psalms 91. Now, we've all been looking at Psalms 91. This is not a new thing. Psalms 91 is a powerful word of protection from the plague, from destruction, um, from the pestilence. And so if you have not read Psalms 91, you need to read it. I encourage you to memorize it, speak it, declare it, pray it, say it daily over your life, over your family. But she brought something out that I hadn't really noticed. So in Psalms 91, she said Psalms 91, 1. Okay, so Psalms 91, verse 1. That correlates to 9, 1, 1. Let me say that again. Psalms 91, 1 is 9, 1, 1. Well, in the Western world, we know what 9, 1, 1 is. It is a state of emergency. Okay, so that really stood out to me in the sense of, Yes, we recognize the emergency naturally, but also there really is an urgency, not just emergency, but an urgency for Psalms 91.1. Now, what does verse 1 say? It says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high God shall abide under the shadow of of the Almighty. So I want to dig into that just a little bit because it's so powerful. It says, He that dwells in the secret place. So I want to show you, beloved, that there is a secret to the secret place. And you have to dwell there. It's not just in a state of emergency. It's not just when I have a need. It's not just when I lost my job or when the country's gone crazy. This dwelling is an abiding. It's a living. It's a habitation. It's a constant place that you need to find. Now, the secret place, that is a place that only you and God can go. It is an intimate place. You can't take anyone there with you. You can't take your husband, your children, your family, your cousins. It is a place for you in God all by yourself. So I want to show you another picture of the secret place today. Go with me to the book of Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 through 13. Matthew 25. Now, we know that we've heard the word that it's the midnight hour. Bible, the Bible has a lot to say about the midnight hour. And we've just, uh, we've just experienced and celebrated the Passover season. And if you've never actually read about the Passover, go to the book of Exodus chapter 11 and 12. And in the actual Passover, which you know we call Easter, but it's biblically the Passover, um, during that time, it actually was required that they do it at midnight. In fact, let me just go to Exodus 11, verse 4, to show you the midnight principle. Exodus 11, verse 
verse 4. It says, Moses said, thus says the Lord, about midnight. There it is, about midnight. I will go out in the midst of Egypt, and the firstborn in the land of Egypt are going to die. But we know the story because of the blood of the lamb that is put upon the doorpost of the home. It says that the Lord is going to know because the blood is going to be the difference maker. It is going to uh, distinguish you from the rest of Egypt. But that was happening about midnight. Now let's go to the New Testament in the book of Matthew. Jesus is going to show another picture of the midnight hour. Now remember, we're connecting this to 911. We're connecting this to Psalms 91.1. He that dwells in the secret place. It is a 911 urgency for you and for me and every individual person to find the secret place. Now, this is a picture of the secret place. In Matthew 25, my words are in red because these are the words of Jesus speaking. Jesus says, The kingdom of heaven shall be like ten virgins. Say ten. Ten virgins. They took their lamp and they went out to meet the bridegroom. Jesus is our heavenly bridegroom. We are the bride and we are in covenant relationship with our bridegroom. We're not going to marry him someday. We are married to him now, present day. I'm in covenant relationship with my bridegroom king. So they're going to go out and meet him. Now, there is a difference between five of them. The Bible says that five are wise and five are foolish. And it grieves my heart to know that in this 911 hour, I know that there, there are those that are behaving wisely and there are those that are behaving foolishly. But I want to be wise. Do you want to be wise in this midnight hour? Let me show you the secret. The secret to the secret place. It says that those who were foolish, they took their lamp, but they had no oil. Say, no oil. But the wise, they took oil in their vessel with their lamps. So what were the foolish virgins lacking? They were lacking oil. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. Now, verse 6, and at midnight... Come on, there's your midnight. There was a cry that was heard saying, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all of those virgins, they all rose up and they trimmed their lamps. They're getting ready. Come on, even the foolish ones, they hear the sound. They hear the trumpet call at midnight and they actually rise up and they're trimming their lamp. So they think they're getting ready, but they're missing an ingredient that is so vital. I'm showing you the secret to the secret place. The 911, the urgency of the hour. And the foolish said, it says, all those virgins, they arose. But the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. Pause for a minute. They were lacking the oil. Beloved, the only place you can get oil is in that place of intimacy with him. You have to go, you as an individual, by yourself, all by yourself. Your husband can't do it for you. Your pastor can't do it for you. The elders of the church can't do it for you. Your parents can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. It is a time of personal response to God. But the foolish are saying, go running to the wise, saying, give me some of your oil. Give me some of your oil. Now, 
This is a very hard part of our story. The wise answered, no, 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 not because they didn't love them, not because they weren't compassionate. There is a principle to the secret place. Those wise said no, because there won't be enough for us and you. But here's what you do. Rather, you go to those who sell and you have to buy for yourself. You have to buy it for yourself. You, 911, 911, you buy for yourself. And this has nothing to do with natural money. This is not corruptible gold and silver. Buying without money, without, you buy with your time. You buy with your intimacy with Jesus. You buy whenever you choose daily every day to set aside your agenda, your plan, your schedule, your wants, your desires, and you say, today, today, I'm going to buy oil from the king. And you, you close the doors, you shut the doors, and mamas, listen to me. I know your children are home. This is how you do it, okay? You, you go into a room, you lock the door, and you tell your children, I am going to be praying, don't disturb me. Okay, this is how you do it. And you go into your room and you lock the door and by yourself, you get upon your knees, you fall on your face and you cry out to God and you worship him. And if you've never had a secret place encounter and you're like, you know, Sarah, the church that I go to, I've never seen anybody get on their face during a service. I want to encourage you, beloved. It's in the book. You will find it in the book over and over and over in scripture. You will find the principle of getting on your face before God to fall upon your face. So go there. And if you're saying, I've never done that before, all you have to do is go there and just begin to thank him. Just start there. Just begin to thank him out of your mouth. Begin to worship him. Just begin to say, Lord, I need you. I want you. I want to know you. I want to hear your voice. I want to see your face. And as you go into that 911 place, as you find the secret place with God, you are buying oil. You are buying the oil of intimacy, beloved. And in this midnight hour, you will be ready. You will be prepared. You will have the oil of intimacy in this 911 hour. Let's finish our story. Buy for yourself. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready, they went in. They had been buying oil all along with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, there was a time that it was too late. Afterward, the other virgins came, saying, Lord, open. But he answered and said, I say to you, I do not know you. The secret to the secret place. You have to know the bridegroom. You have to know him intimately. Jesus says, watch, therefore, verse 13. For you know neither the day nor the hour that the Son of Man is coming. I invite you to pray with me now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just come to your throne of grace, O oh God. Father, we thank you for this 911, Lord. The calling, the trumpeting sound of 911. He that dwells in the secret place of God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
Father, I pray now for every person who is listening now, God, that, Lord, you would draw them into the secret place with you, God, that we would find the secret place of intimacy, of fellowship, of relationship, of worship, Lord, of abiding with you, God. Father, that in this hour we will find the oil, God, that we will find the oil, Lord, that will make a difference in the midnight hour, God, that we will be wise before you, God. Lord, that we're not going to busy ourselves with projects and distraction and things to keep us busy, Lord, that we're going to go into the secret place and we're going to buy for ourselves the oil, Lord, the oil of your beauty, the oil of your presence, the oil of your word, the oil of intimacy God so father today I declare father that those that are listening they are wise in this hour they are ready in this hour they have oil in this hour because they have found the secret to the secret place with you so God I thank you for the drawing of your spirit in the midnight hour, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We'll bless you. We love you. And, and I know that my 10 for 10 has gotten stretched out a little bit longer. So thank you for staying tuned. I will see you tomorrow at 10 o'clock.